If you have a message you need to circulate among many people, how do you go about doing it? Today, the ability to go viral on social media can be achieved by just about anyone with a digital device and an internet connection. Facebook posts, tweets, and short videos shared on YouTube and TikTok are seen by millions of people every day. But imagine yourself in the shoes of a 19th century social reformer like Dr. Beckus's brother-in-law, Garrett Smith. How would you get your message across to your fellow Americans? In an era before the advent of digital communications, modern audiences may wonder how social movements were made to gain traction among broader circles in the 1800s. Although these movements were spearheaded by powerful orators, the message conveyed was only as strong as the methods of its dissemination. While publication of books and newspapers were valuable in the spreading of ideas to the American people, no other print format provided the opportunity for mass communication among various socioeconomic backgrounds like that of the pamphlet. Whereas average people may have found difficulty finding the finances to fund the publication of a book, let alone a dedicated publisher who provides such a platform for expression, pamphlets and circulars were a cheaper means of communicating ideas. This method of spreading ideas was notably employed by Thomas Paine during the American Revolution, perhaps most famously in his publication, the pamphlet entitled Common Sense. With the availability of print resources and a relatively limited budget, this form of mass communication lent itself to the publicizing of wealth of varying and oftentimes conflicting opinions. While the number of perspectives being represented through books and editorials may be limited, there was little in the way of preventing one from representing his voice in print. Similar to the modern equivalent of social media posts, the content being shared had the potential to contain elements of truth as well as falsehoods. In fact, the word libel, meaning to defame an individual through the false written statements, has its etymological roots in the early written pamphlets intended to slander political figures called libel, or little books. Thus, many pamphlets of the time depicted a spectrum of perspectives on a number of hotly debated topics, such as temperance, states' rights, suffrage, and abolition. As a prolific writer of pamphlets, Garrett Smith came to write over 600 circulars in his lifetime, championing many social issues. Fellow friend and reformer Louis Tappan commented on Garrett's writing in a letter on October 14, 1843, saying, do you keep a press in your house? Are your family all printers? Do you sleep nights? To be serious, I rejoice that you have the power, intellectual and physical, to do so much, and that in general, you do so well. Despite the boggling number of circulars he published and the praise he received for his oratorical abilities, Smith himself admitted that his skills in writing were lacking in qualities of rhetorical beauty. Instead, Smith came to depend on the sheer output of pamphlets to broadcast his beliefs, most often written in a brusque, absolutist manner. In fact, it would not be a far cry to compare the act of plastering the American public with relatively inexpensive and readily available broadsides to present-day social media activism through the relative ease of dissemination. In one pamphlet, Smith adamantly writes, True, permanent peace can never be restored until slavery the occasion of the war, has ceased. The sword, which is now drawn, will never be returned to its scabbard, until victory, entire decisive victory, is ours or theirs, not until that broad and deep and damning stain on our country's escutcheon is clean washed out, that plague spot on our country's honor gone forever, or until slavery has riveted anew her present chains and brought our heads also to bow beneath her withering power. It is idle, it is criminal, to hope for the restoration of peace on any other condition. Further fanning the flames of discourse, some of Smith's dissenters took to the circular medium to repudiate his work, publishing counter pamphlets decrying Smith as a propagandist and a madman. Perhaps in an historical precursor to the internet flame war, these pamphlet wars were sustained in the participants' abilities to reprint and recirculate pamphlets that they found agreeable to their own beliefs. As the media circuit was flooded with contradicting opinions, some of his contemporaries, and in particular his opponents, noted Smith's advantages in broadcasting his views more prominently as he had a greater financial means of promoting his circulars. 
Similar to the ephemerality of social media, pamphlets generally had a shorter lifespan in terms of lasting communications material. Although historians view broadsides as being of great educational value through their depiction of multiple perspectives from varying socioeconomic backgrounds, the preservation of these materials were viewed as being secondary to other forms of media during the time of their publication. Fortunately for modern audiences, the number of circulars being preserved and distributed among scholars and the public alike is continuously being expanded in both physical and digital formats. As you consider the impact of circulars on widespread communications, we ask you to investigate your own relationship with social media in relation to the past. While the greater accessibility and relative swiftness of circulars may have been a boon to rhetoricians of yore, similar improvements to today's electronic communication has offered us both positive and negative consequences. The internet allows the dissemination of ideas ranging various perspectives and levels of validity, all projected at nearly instantaneous speeds. Take a minute to consider your own relationship with digital communications and compare it with how those of the 19th century may have interacted with print media. Are there certain sources of informational formats that you consider to be more trustworthy than others? How many of your opinions are influenced by what you read or see online? Whether you find yourself to be fully plugged into the digital information superhighway, or you prefer your news in print, you will likely find that the trends of yesteryear are not so far from those of the modern age.